this is Lucy Lafke, the National Community Services Agency, Gira Lata, Oshokonate. Can you describe your program and what it's called? I work with uh, TCSA Education. Um, I'm a teacher and I work at the board uh, as a language and a cult culture coordinator, Kinchon Language and Culture Coordinator. Our job is to provide support for the language teachers that are in the school by um, helping them with their training and also uh, making materials and that they may need in, in their schools. And we'll also do community visits. Um, the main program that uh, we deal with in the junior kindergarten to grade 12 is Tlinchonyati, the language, and Donawo, which is the culture, and Gonawuke, which is our way of life. What are the age groups and your or your target audience? Well, we do have um, a chief dream in school that have a daycare. So uh, for the students who are, who are uh, in school or for people who are working for TCSA, and we have pre uh, daycare uh, to preschool, which is probably about uh, ages uh, six months to four year olds, and then we have kindergarten all the way to grade twelve, which could be between ages five to seventeen. But in our region, um, even people that drop out uh, get an opportunity to go back to school. So there are times when. You go to, to a grad and you'll see a mother and a son or a mother and daughter or son and father, son and daughter graduating together, which is uh, really good. So I, I can't really say that uh, age is only up to 17, which uh, normal school systems have, because in the north, uh, the people that drop out don't really have any other places to go. So I'm glad that our board is able to, to bring in the older students back. What is the aim of your program? The aim of our program is like our, our um, mission statement says, strong like two people. And I think the history of, of um, our leaders bringing the school system into, into our region is really important because before a lot of us were being sent to residential schools, but when our leaders, uh, when us children came back into the community and a lot of us were losing our language and our way of life. The elders were very concerned so they lobbied to get a school built here and so the Chief Jimmy School is the school that um, the, the elders like uh, Chief Jimmy Bruno and his counselors worked really hard in getting the school in, in, in our region. And at the beginning at the school, the leaders were very strong in saying that our way of life and um, two cultures ha have to be taught. And um, the one thing that they did to, to make sure that uh, what they're talking about was being done, we had elders. When the Chief Dream Room School first opened up, we had elders. They were in the school doing the activities that um, they were gifted with. So some, you, you go in there and you see a lady working on hide, you know, doing hide preparation from the beginning to the end. In another place you see uh, an elder working on, on making snowshoes. And in another place you'll see an elder telling uh, stories to, to students. And then you go out in the tent and you'll see elders cooking food. So the elders were a very important part at the beginning. But like, like many uh, systems, um, if you don't have funding, then they didn't have funding to, to, to have the elders in school. So it sort of died and went away. How do you measure the success of your program? Well, to get back to the aim, uh, strongly like two people is, is really important. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so important for our students to be coming into, into the school 
where they're also being taught their language. We want them to be able to speak so they can be part of the elder cir circle. But the other thing about um, learning the language is that uh, when you learn the language, you learn your history, you learn your, your customs, you, you learn what your heritage is. And spirituality is number one. It, it, our elders are always talking about why spirituality is really important. And of course, the land environment uh, are so important. And also to uh, make sure that we're indigenizing the, the, the schools that we have in, in our region because they're right in the Tlinchon, Tlinchon land. And so it's very important because in the past, language especially the language program was down the hall you go there to to learn your language and it wasn't really part of the whole school or else sometimes when they don't even have a classroom for a language teacher that the language teachers will be carting their materials from class to class because they didn't really have a place for 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 their language so that's also another reason but i i think a dedicated curriculum it's also what really, really support the program that we're doing because it's a foundation of, of everything that we do. It was, this uh, dedicated curriculum was created with the help of the elders from the Northwest Territories, all the elders, and the elders would be brought together and we went from place to place to place. And we went through, they selected the themes, the themes that they selected uh, had to do with animals, from our region, it had to do with the land, it had to do with the people, and it had to do with the land and sky. These things are what our children are living in and with, and that they really needed to, 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 to know these things. So that's the reason why we have the Dinikide curriculum, which is really, really important. We'll have one for kindergarten to, to grade six. We'll also have one for um, grade seven, uh, the junior high. In the junior high, a lot of it has to do with um, rites of passage, the, the, the things that they're, they're going through. They also are um, getting old enough to really understand their role in the society. So they learn about um, self-government and they learn about developing their, their talents. They also learn about um, winter camp and passage to manhood, womanhood so that they really understand what their roles and responsibilities are. How do you measure the success of your program? Right now we have, at EMES, we have an immersion program. Mm -hmm. So we have a kindergarten class, a grade one class, a grade two class that are in an immersion where it's Tintron language all day. And yesterday we the immersion teachers brought their students to the senior home and they sang O Canada and they also <clears throat> showed the elders some of the things that they're learning in Tlintron, which was really great because the elders were really happy to, to see the young ones and especially to hear the Tlintron words coming out of a four-year-old or five-year-old or six-year-old so that I think that they're happy that, that the language Though it's not as strong, it's still, still among. Uh, we're passing it on to, to our youth. We we'll also have locally developed courses. These are the locally developed courses that are being taught to high school, because we do have a language program that go from kindergarten all the way to grade nine, which is only about forty five, forty to forty five minutes a day, which uh, even though. They're not going to be able to be fluent speakers at the end, but well, uh, th that's how it is. And then when they get to high school, they have courses that they can take. They have Tintron Yati 15, 25, and 35. We'll also have um, um, other courses that we had, like the Tintron history. We'll also have Konawuke, where the, the children are being taught uh, trapping and hunting and the skills that they need um, if they're going to be living in, in, in the north, especially in our region. So we do have that. And we'll also have, um, for, for the teachers, we have, we, we developed this last year with, in partnership with uh, Tlinchon government. This is uh, Tlinchon history. 
So it goes from uh, grade one to grade eight. So in, in the teacher's um, book, it tells, it gives them uh, information on um, all the communities. Every community it has the uh, background history because a lot of our, our even our parents don't really know the history of the the community that, that they're in. And then a lot of legends that have been identified by the parents themselves. We developed this after uh, parents had taken a couple of courses, locally developed courses through a Clinton government. And a lot of them didn't really know their religion. A lot of them didn't know who um, uh, Mufi was. They didn't know who um, Edzo was. So a lot of them, because when they had gone through the school system, none of that was being taught to them. And so they didn't want the same thing to happen to their children. So they um, uh, tasked us to, to create a Tintron history uh, curriculum, which will be taught in the school, whether uh, it's taught in a regular program. So the teachers that are, e even non Tintron teachers, are, are teaching this. Because in, in the curriculums that, um, in the grade five curriculum, we have all the teaching notes for, for them. So we have the floating time. And this is the cosmology that goes with with this. So we're teaching the central history through our cosmology. So if we're uh, teaching in school, we teach them this is the history of the Tintron people. Down there is the history of Canada. It's linear, where if you look at our Tintron uh, cosmology, things happen. This is when the world was new. The animals were first people here, and they were just developing. And then as things start to develop, and then Yamosa, there's a lot of stories about Yamosa and all the things that he had done. So the Yamosa was a very important person, and uh, he did. There were a lot of conflicts, things that were happening that he helped re resolve. And then as things resolve, you move into into the next generation. And then there are a lot of things that have happened. And then here, when we had contact and. Um, dealing with a contact, a lot of conflict, a lot of things that happen. We call it the dark time. So when we're talking to students, we tell them th this one here is a little bit gray because a lot of negative things that happen with clashes between, between the two cultures. And then we talk about how self-government in 2018, things that you know, you're going forward. And as young and uh, people, these are a lot of things that you need to be um, dealing with, but you also need a lot of skills to be able to, to go forward. And it will also uh, use this to help them um, uh, understand that language changes. Because during this time, the word Yamuza, at the beginning of the, when the world was new, was here. And to this day, we still have the word Yamuza. But computer and um, uh, skidu didn't come into our, our language until here. So there are some languages that that carry on. There are some languages that die that because we, 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 our culture changes all the time. Like with the bow and arrow, we're not using bow and arrow anymore. But then, and 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 all the 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 things that, that the bow and arrow maker used to do, and and all the language that went with and making bow and arrow. We don't have it in, in our vocabulary anymore today. But this is the, the cosmology app that we're using with the development of that, that, um, that curriculum, Clinton History curriculum. So this is being taught to the students from grade one to grade nine. We'll also um, have the, what, what, what we call CBIP. It's called, uh, it's a um, curriculum-based uh, planning. The, the teachers uh, from grade three to grade six, they do, they collaborate with each other. And then even though you have a grade three teacher in Inhuati, Gamati, and Wikwiti, and here at e EMS in, in Edzo at CJBS, they collaborate together and then they talk about um, the legends they want to, 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 to do from the Denikide curriculum. And then all how science and social studies are all integrated. And so they're 
they're integrating the subjects and, and teaching it to, to the students that they have. Because in our region, we have a lot of multi-grades. In the smaller community, you have uh, a grade three teacher that's teaching grade three, four, five, and six. So she has four grades uh, in her class. And so that becomes also a challenge in itself. And we do a lot of uh, uh, language development. Um, we have tapes that uh, the students have. And Clinton songs, because a lot of our, our Clinton strong Clinton uh, elder singers, a lot of them have passed on. So uh, I'm really glad that it, uh, Chief Jimmy Bruno were able to, to do a uh, recording uh, of the songs. We also, um, uh, the local artist David Gunn, we hired him one time. He went from school to school to school and did a, a, a music with the students, and a lot of his songs are, are in Clinton. Right now he has a, a, a CD that's all Christmas songs. And we'll also um, develop uh, materials. Uh, th this is the legend. It's all. It's my 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 um, my vision or my dream would be to have it only in the language and not the Klinchon because I'm mean English because the the kids know how to read in Klinchon in English, so they go to to that. Uh, Instead of staying in a language, we want them to stay in the in the language, and so this is another one that was done by uh, in in um, partnership with other group. But all this is is all in in Klinchon, which I like. It's all in Klinchon, and the well, I do have one that's in English. We we'll also have one that's written in in Klinchon, which is really important. But the quality of materials are some of the the challenges and issues that we have because there's just uh, Rosa and I are working at, at the language center the teachers are asking to uh, they need this they need that and I'm not a trained curriculum developer I, I'm, I'm not gifted in any way with music or anything but we try the best that we can to develop materials that they will need to be able to, to do a good job in, in teaching the students that are in, in their class. We'll also have on the land culture programs. So all the schools uh, do get uh, uh, funding and they take, uh, a lot of them do the fall camp. Uh, a lot of them also do winter camp and spring camp where the kids get to go out in the land. And um, Years ago, uh, uh, we developed um, a summer, a summer uh, to be part of the community trails of our ancestors. So every year, Clinton government they go to different communities to hold their meeting, and the other communities would canoe over the, over there uh, because that's what our people always used to do. Every year, they all uh, uh, gather at a place in the summertime. And so we do have the trails of our ancestors that um, we had done in the past. How do you measure the success of your programs? When I hear children speaking the language, one year I went to Walmart, I was just walking, and I can hear this little Clinton voice singing away, and I followed it, follow it, follow it. It was a little, little uh, girl singing Clinton song. Uh, so I was so happy. No, I I didn't talk to her or anything, but I, I talked to her, the teacher, and she said, we've been singing that song for almost a week now, and now I'm just teaching them how uh, a certain, uh, especially trying to teach them the syllables, because English language and clinical language are so different. We have 41, um, we don't call it alphabet, we call it R-A-E-O, because uh, our language is syllable-based, where English only have 26 uh, alphabet. So if you're teaching them, uh, if you want to teach the children uh, the syllables, then um, my friend was working at the school, she called and said, no, I, I need something, I I'm tr trying to teach the, the children and the, the letters of, of uh, our language. And so I thought, and I tried to find a really catchy tune, so I came up with 
Oh la la, oh la la, oh la le li lo, because it has the syllables in there. And so the, the children are, are learning that. And then a couple of uh, weeks later, my friend phoned again at the school and she said, the kids are just giggling, laughing when, when I'm, I'm singing uh, oh la la, oh la la, it's bar L. It's an oh la la, oh la la. They're just laughing. So she said, I asked them, why, why are you laughing? And they said, when, when we say that, it tickles. <laughs> Because some of the, the, the sounds that are in Tlinchon are not in English, and if they speak only English, then their muscles that they need to develop uh, the, the sounds in their mouth are not there yet. So they're just discovering where the sound is coming from and where is this other sound coming from. So we do develop a lot of materials, sometimes just, you know, Christmas concert is coming up, can you do something for me? <laughs> Sometimes it gets to that, but just hearing young voices in, in the community and then having uh, the community people themselves tell us certain things like when they started the immersion program, a mother was saying, my child is learning, teaching me in colors, like you know, my child taught me how to say the Lord's Prayer, like they're, they're actually learning the, 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 from their own children that are going to the school. And then um, a, a young lady was telling us that every morning on the intercom at EMES, the, the owls say the, they sing O Canada in Tlinchon, they do the prayers in Tlinchon. And she said, I learned my prayers by, list, by standing outside my house and listening to, to it over the intercom, mm -hmm. even though she's about like from here to maybe past the church. Her house is that far away, but she can hear it. So it's really good when you, I hear people telling us things like that, then I'm really glad. Um, we have, uh, we've been doing literacy in, in the evenings for, for parents and people that are working. So we have many people that can read. Maybe the writing skill is not there yet, but they can read. So that's really good, I, I think. From your perspective, what is Indigenous education? I think when, when, when I, I think of myself, because I've been in residential school for 13 years of my life, and I nearly did lose my language, and I know I'm not as skillful in my traditional activities as my other uh, sisters in my family. There's about 13 of us in the family. So um, f for me, um, language really identifies you. So when in a community, when, when I see family members that are speaking the language and I see them laughing together and I see the joy in their face and the happiness, then it really makes me happy that the language is still alive within the family and within that, that a group of uh, people that are together. And I feel that uh, that is so important, but for, for um, me, for, for when I think about, um, as soon as they go into school, because a lot of, of, of us who have gone through re resident, residential school still have a lot of barriers or, or we don't like going into that building because it reminds us of our residential school days and, and some people have bad experience in, in the school itself. But one of the things that the elder had, had told us was you go through one door, then you have to get through another door to get into the school, then you go through another door to get to the, the uh, principal or also the classroom. Like there's so many doors that are blocking your way. Yes. And so if we can have a school that's um, really warm and 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 accepting of any people that, that, that come in. and But then I would like to see a school where the students and the staff are really, really welcoming and, and embracing people that are coming to, to the school. And making sure that the students know how to treat elders, how to greet elders. As soon as you see an elder coming in 
or into any of your homes, you always tell them, do you want coffee, you want tea, you want something to drink, you want something to eat? Because these are just a part of uh, sharing that is so important part of our din la. And I would like to, to see a lot of our, our people in our region that have certain gifts that were given to them, like musician, musicians and artists and people that are really good in craft to promote more of what it means to be proud and be Chong. Like I like to see more. I remember one year wearing my straw jacket in Yale Knife. It was a red straw jacket with white and a lot of really nice um, beaded uh, flowers on it. I would just stand in the corner waiting for the light to change and then my nephew from Wikwiti, Auntie, he says, why are you wearing an old jacket like that? <laughs> so I'd like to really help the younger generation think about uh, our art, the, our clothing as something that's beautiful and not as something that's old and outdated. <laughs> But being a spiritually strong, having a purpose, and enjoying life is something that um, our elders have always said is more important than material wealth. And those are the kind of things that I think is so important for our people to know. What is your perspective on the importance of languages and language revitalization in Indigenous education or for Indigenous peoples? For me, it's really important that everybody knows who they are. They, they know their history, their heritage, and the, the Dinikita curriculum, when it was developed, one of the things that the elders told us that's so important, I think, is it's a, a, whatever you're, you're teaching has to be authentic. Whatever you're teaching in, to, to the students, you should also see it in the home or in the community. So for, for, for me, when we're talking about revitalizing the language, um, I'm, I'm glad that uh, people are... are and I, I've, I've taken courses too through uh, University of Victoria. I've also done a couple of courses through University of Alberta. I, got, uh, I went through the TIP program in Saskatchewan. So because I'm really strong in, in um, being told uh, stories through my grandparents and having been born and living out in the land I was about six years old before residential school I had a really strong foundation so the love for 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 who I am as a teacher person and for for the language and for my culture and for my people is, is really really strong because I've lived that life but when we're talking about revitalizing the language the I, I find I have a struggle with it because everything is academic based, everything is written in English, and when um, people that have dropped out of school are trying to get into the program, they may not have the writing to be able to really uh, uh, think about the things that they want to write. They're going to struggle, and I, I don't want them to struggle and fail and, and then already uh, say, I can't do it. No. Uh, and just, and a lot of reading that you're doing is, is uh, languages that you haven't been using a lot. So you're going to be struggling trying to figure out what are they saying. No. So in a way, it, it's I find that revitalization is something that we need to do, but I would like to to now thinking about it, having gone through it, it needs to be done in our language. It needs to be done, everything needs to be done in our language because a, a lot of the younger generation, some of the younger generation, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say, oh, don't realize that they've been colonized. They, they don't realize that the life they're modeling for their kids, the life that they're living, a lot of them don't even consider themselves um, or promote cultural language and culture. They're just sort of uh, doing other things in their life that um, they want to do. But if um, they really wanted to revitalize the language, I, I want to make sure that they understand 
why they're doing it. If you're just pushing people just to get the number, then I don't know what their the criteria they have at the universities that are offering these courses. And I don't know um, how they're making people accountable for for um, their, their learning. Do you want me to pass on to the dictionary next generation? Yeah. Just be true to who you are. Like, I was born Kinchon. I'll die Kinchon. And that's what uh, Denikede is all about, being authentic, being who you are, being true to yourself. And when you're teaching something, you're doing it here, but you also need to see it there. So it, it, there has to be a connection. You can't just teach things in isolation. They won't, they won't um, be embedded in, 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 as part of who you are mm -hmm. if you do things like that. What is your vision for Indigenous education over the next 10 years? More Tlingchon teachers. <laughs> I'd like to see more Tlingchon teachers who can speak the language. Because we do have quite a few Tlingchon teachers. And some of them are young Tlingchon teachers that that um, have been really colonized. Like, they think they're more white than white people. <laughs> and you do see that in their attitude. I don't think they know it. And when you say, I'm Tlingchon, do you really mean it? Is what sometimes I, I think. And, uh, and of course, that materials that we have, I'd like to see really high-quality materials that we're going to not photocopy stuff to, to, to language teachers. Like, no, I, I, I hate that. But we don't have a lot of authors that can uh, write a story for a kindergarten where they're doing a lot of language uh, repetition, where they we're teaching the kids to, to listen to language and patterns. And then we don't have uh, a lot of really good stories to challenge the students that are in the junior high. Give them a story where they'll be able to, to think creatively and then to be able to comprehend what they're reading and be able to, to, to argue and say this, is, this character was this and then this story ended this way. I didn't like it. I want to see more of that. And we also need a, a, a lot of... Uh, stories written for adults. If you want to continue, continue to grow with your language once you get out of school, then there should be, a, I like to see a whole library just full of kitchen books. <laughs> Every kind of book that you can find. Mm -hmm. Of course, a lot of um, uh, movies and dramas and everything and from our culture in our language is something that I think would be really great to have. Mm -hmm.